I know it's uh, the beginning of the show, but I already want to give Kirk Mel a star of the show. Have you guys been outside recently? This is the, about eight hours. the perfect weather. I walked Bosco before coming in here. It was amazing. No humidity, light breeze, cool. Mellish, my man. I don't, keep doing what you do, buddy. This was <laughs> fantastic. Roll that window down if you're stuck in traffic. It's just, like, if I could pick perfect weather, this would be it. So where are we at with the... The, the back sweat meter? Yeah. Uh, let me see. Yamamoto hit my bell. It's like a two. Still? How's the perfect weather and it's a two? Because yeah. I was walking. I was walking Bosco, so I was, there was a little glisten. I don't think at any <laughs> point. <laughs> well, I can't go zero because then when it's freezing, so I got to, you know, you I still can still sweat sw freeze. Yeah, I know. That's true. Uh, but it's just gorgeous. <laughs> like, this is the I'm perfect so weather for me. If I, if I could have this, this weather 364 days a year, that's oh, what I, I want. Yeah. On Christmas, I want snow. Sure. But this weather right now, 364 days a year, glorious. Glorious. Um, we got a big show tonight. Little Sanji will join us with a fast food review. I got a Facebook bone to pick. Okay. Uh, and we're going to talk about ghosts, but I want to update uh, the Jimmy Carter story you heard here live on Atlanta's Morning News. Uh, former President Jimmy Carter uh, back in the hospital this morning after a fall in his home in Plains, Georgia. It's not the first spill that 95 year old Jimmy Carter has taken. Earlier this month, he needed a dozen stitches in his forehead after falling at home. But hours later, he was back on a Habitat for Humanity project hammer in hand i had a number one priority and that was to come to nashville to build houses this time the staff for the 39th president says carter suffered a minor pelvic fracture he's under observation at a hospital a few miles from his home jim ryan abc news uh, now i don't care what you think about jimmy carter's uh politics or his legacy as a president i just love the dude i've got a special connection to the dude he was the first when i was a kid he was the first president i remember and then when he wasn't president anymore, I didn't, I mean, I was so young, I didn't understand the process. I was bawling. I'm like, how is he not the president anymore? And he's the only president I've ever met in person. And he was super nice to me. And the guy's just, he might be the greatest person to ever be president. You know, yes. he's not the greatest president, but like, what a great guy. You, last time he fell, he had stitches, black eye. Next morning, he's out building a habitat home. He teaches Sunday school. Like, this guy is just an awesome dude. So I've got a very close connection to Jimmy Carter. Uh, going back to my childhood days when he was the first president I remembered, we wanted to check in on the status of Jimmy Carter. So I sent Richard Elliott from Channel 2 uh, down to Plains, Georgia. He joins us live on the show. Richard, thanks for taking direction for me and, and taking that long trip down to Plains. When Mark Aram called, I said, <laughs> uh, yes, sir. What, what, so you went down to, to uh, Jimmy Carter's hometown, the president's hometown. Um, what do we know? What are people saying? And, and what's going to happen? I mean, this, this is happening with uh, all too much regularity. Well, I'm literally sitting outside the hospital now over in Americus, which is about 7, 10 miles uh, from downtown Plains, Phoebe Sumter uh, Medical Center, where he is right now. Um, everyone seems to say that he is okay. You know, as okay as a 95-year-old man with a minor pelvic fracture can be, uh, he's in, he, for a 95-year-old man, he is in terrific shape. I heard you talking about it earlier. But at some point, the body begins to fail you, and you begin to start seeing more of these, of these falls. I remember my own grandfather, when he was about 92, 93, 94 years old, he was just having trouble staying on his feet. And that just may be uh, some of what we're seeing now. We hope not. But that may be some of what we're seeing now. Richard Elliott from Channel 2 joining us outside the hospital where former President Jimmy Carter is recovering from his latest fall, uh, minor pelvic fracture. Uh, he, he and Rosalind just uh, set the record for the longest presidential marriage of all time. She, I believe, is 92 years old. He's 95. How is her health, and is she able to, to take care of, of the president? Well, we, have, we haven't heard, gotten any updates uh, about her. I remember five months ago, when he had a fall at his house, he and some family members, uh, they were going turkey hunting back in May, and he took a tumble, and that's when he broke his hip and needed his hip replacement here at the same hospital. And I believe that Rosalind uh, had uh, an episode as well. I think she felt faint, and she wound up uh, uh, spending the night, too. Uh, as far as I know, she is fine. Uh, she's probably right by his side, where she usually is, but we have not gotten a, an update on her. I'm just trying to think long term. I mean, because we've all had to deal with this, whether it's parents or grandparents, they get to that advanced age, and you got to start thinking about long term. And, and is there is there something 
uh, set up, you know, uh, as far as not not necessarily hospice care, but something where where it just becomes uh, too hard for for the former president to function and he needs some help. Talking to Richard Elliott from Channel Two Action News down in front of the uh, South Georgia Hospital, where President Jimmy Carter is recovering from his latest fall. Do we know any long term plans about uh, about the president's health and what might happen if if he can't function regularly anymore, Richard? Well, we don't know about any long-term plans. I can tell you that mentally he is just as sharp as ever, um, which is good news. That's half the battle. I, I, I will tell you that the Carter family um, rallies around Jimmy Carter um, from Jason Carter to his niece, uh, Billy's daughter, Kim Fuller. Uh, and then it is such a small and tight-knit community the folks in Plains refer to President Carter as Mr. Jimmy, and everybody takes care of Mr. Jimmy because everybody in Plains loves Jimmy Carter. So there is already a support system in place. Anything the former president needs, someone in Plains, many people in Plains, either from his church or from the city or from his family or internationally. They're going to step up and they're going to take care of them. I saw your report at uh, on Channel 2 Action News at 5. You were in Plains. For those of us that have never been, I mean, I, I, I imagine a small town, but this is, gosh, a really small town. Paint the picture for us of what Plains is like. You should come to Plains at least once. Plains is, imagine a, a rural highway that runs through a town. There's a, if you're coming, the easiest way to come from Atlanta is you come uh, down 85, 185 through Columbus, you turn left at Richland and head straight into Plains. You're going down the rural highway. There is a train track on the right, and on the other side of the train track is a main street that's probably three, four hundred yards long with some old turn of the last century uh, brick buildings, and that is Plains. It is a few brick buildings, it is peanut and grain silos, farms, uh, and a lot of old houses. Hey, and, Queens, nice. and I, I saw, I mean, I've always pictured, I've never actually seen video from Plains. Uh, I just I had a, a vision in my head. Basically, I'm thinking of Whitefish, Montana, where, where Chuck grew up. But then I saw your video today. I was like, wow, that is even smaller than I thought. And if you're going to visit, visit during the winter time or the fall right now, it's good. Because there are times in the summer, late summer, where the gnats, you're below the gnat line. Okay. The gnats are so thick, <laughs> they're maddening down here. Richard Elliott uh, from Channel 2 Action News joining us outside the hospital uh, in uh, South Georgia where uh, former President Jimmy Carter is recovering from his latest fall. You talked to some folks, uh, some regular plain folks at Jimmy, uh, in Jimmy's hometown. What did they have to say about our former president? Well, they say the good news is they haven't heard any news, which to them means everything's okay. Because if there were some bad news or serious news, it would have gone through that town like wildfire. So the fact that they haven't heard anything means that the family has not been talking to friends and the rumor mill hasn't started. So they actually consider not hearing much information, sign that everything's okay. Now, as far as dinner plans, I know you got to be getting hungry, Richard. Are, is there anywhere to eat in Plains? you got to go to Americas? What, what's the dinner plans tonight? Usually, well, we, we're, we're going to drive back, but if you're in <laughs> Plains for lunch, you go to the Buffalo Cafe. Uh, it is the only restaurant in Plains, and chances are, if Jimmy Carter's in town, there's a 50-50 chance you'll have lunch with the former president. Wow. Otherwise, you do have to go into America. Well, you're right. I've, I've got to get down there. I've got to see Plains. Richard Elliott, always a pleasure. Follow him on Twitter at R. Elliott WSB. Have a safe trip back, my friend. Mark, and I'm going to tell you, if you're going to come to Plains, you go to Bobby Salter's General Store, and you get the homemade peanut butter ice cream. Ooh. You will want to come back just for that. that I'm going to set up the Plains Food Bus Tour. We just go down, we get the ice cream, we have lunch. Good stuff. Thanks a lot, Richard. Sure, thank you. Take care, buddy. I, I know, I just, Chuck, I, I've got a soft spot in my heart for Jimmy Carter. Like, I know the presidency didn't go great. My my dad complained about 22% interest rate on his mortgage. and the, <laughs> But, I mean, what a genuinely nice guy. Yeah. Just uh, un unbelievable. I, I hope he's, so um, I, I met him one time. And I've told this story a bunch in the air, but I'll refresh it. So back when the Braves were on WSB Radio, I would do the pregame show, and I was part of the postgame show. And some days, after the end of the game, I would go on the field and interview the star player of the show. 
for a baseball fan, it was no cooler job. Right. I mean, I wasn't making any money, but it was really awesome. Yeah. So around the seventh inning, I would leave the press box and walk down near the Braves' dugout. Um, and then as soon as the game ends, the usher would open the, the gate and let me walk onto the field, and I'd interview Chipper or Brian Giles or Maddox or whomever. And one day, I'm walking down just a regular game, uh, probably on a Thursday night, and I noticed that there's, there's usually those good seats are packed, but this time there, there are only a handful of people there. I'm like, oh, the game's out of hand, blah, blah, blah. So I'm walking down, not thinking of anything, and all of a sudden, two guys in suits come up to me and surround me. And I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> they were Secret Service agents. Yeah. Because it was the president and, his, and the former first lady were sitting in the first, first row next to the Braves dugout. And he looks behind to see the commotion. And I show the, the security, uh, the Secret Service, my press pass. And I'm like, I, I'm just coming down. You know, blah. And he's like, you can't be down here, blah. And Jimmy Carter's like, no, no, let him come down. Let him come down. So for like an inning and a half, I sat next to the president and the first lady and didn't say a word. I was so <laughs> nervous. I might have soiled myself, first of all, when the Secret Service came and, and stopped me. But he was so nice. He's like, so what do you, what, what's your name? What are you doing? And I'm like, Mark, uh, I don't know. Uh, leave me alone. I was free. He was so nice. So nice. A whole inning and a half, and you as a, as a broadcast guy Didn't, couldn't come up with anything nope. to say. Nope. Like That's a shrunken best. turtle. That's right. You were there. Shrinkage. I had like a shrinkage. Turtle. Like a frightened turtle. <laughs> it was cold. It was cold. I was in the pool. Yes. Uh, all right. Uh, so we, we wish uh, best wishes to Jimmy Carter. Your thoughts on the former president. 404-872-0750-1800. WSB Talk on Twitter and Instagram at Mark Aram. This is the Mark Aram Show. Welcome back to the show. 627, 67 degrees on Peachtree Street. The finest weather of all the weathers right here in Metro Atlanta. Enjoy it. As you drive home, Mark McKay with airborne traffic updates every six minutes. A lot of big news in Washington, uh, anonymous and whistleblowers and testimonies and all that stuff. Jamie Dupree's got you covered. Full analysis tomorrow morning on Atlanta's Morning News with Scott Slade beginning at 4.30 a.m. I talked to Erickson in the, uh, the baton switch as he left the studio and I came in. He said he's got a couple ideas about who anonymous might be. So stick, uh, stick close to Erickson's feed and... You can find him on the Revenant Resurgent. The Resurgent. I've got yeah, no, I know that. I've got no hippocampus. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, I got defriended by a dude on Facebook, and I'm taking it very hard. Oh no! Yes, and you know this guy too. Uh, Are you both really? of you. Yeah. So oh, I'm going to throw him under the bus when we come back. Yay! Little Sanji will join us as well. Uh, it's the Mark Aram Show, 95.5 WSB Atlanta's News and Talk. This is Robert Wagner, and you're listening to that famous anti-dentite, Mark Aram. 639, 67 glorious degrees on Peachtree Street. Me and the bananas at your beck and call till 8 in the p.m. Actually, Sands Deb Green, executive producer of the show, still on vacation. Is she back tomorrow? I was going to ask her. Thursday? I don't know. I think Thursday. We're a rudderless ship here on the Mark Aram Show. Very incomplete. Very incomplete. Uh, Little Sanjay is going to join us in 30 minutes with Would You Rather. Always a fun segment. So Saturday night, I went out to dinner, I told you yesterday, with the B98 fellas. Yeah. And Tad Lemire, who is the host of their morning show, says, yeah, um, I got defriended by one of our buddies on Facebook. I was like, that's interesting. Who is it? He says, Fisher. You guys remember Fisher? Oh, yeah. 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 So I was like, that's odd. So he called him out on it. He's, he, I guess he called him up. He's like, Fishbone, what's the deal, man? Why would you uh, defriend me on Facebook? He's like, I just trim my list. If I don't have, you know, you know, contact with a person, I, I defriended him. And uh, Chris Egan's like, uh, so we all pulled out our phones to see if he defriended it. And Chris Egan is still friends with him. And, and Egan's like, well, there's no way he defriended you, Aaron. I'm like, no, of course not. You know, I've known Fisher for 15 years. Well, what? Dude defriended me. Really? Yeah, and it's not like we don't have contact. Yeah, like, that's odd because you just called him to ask him about it. Yeah, he like, texts the show. We talk on Instagram. Like, he's, I still, it's weird. So I looked at the, like, so he, I guess he trimmed his Facebook friend list down. I thought I would have survived the cut. I mean, I'm not losing sleep over it, but it was surprising. So this is the people he's still friends with. So in his mind, he is closer with these people than me. These are people we work with. You ready? Okay. <laughs> um, Chris Camp, WSB News Director. Chris, Chris Camp's a better dude than me. I can understand why someone would be, want to be friends with Chris Camp instead of me. Right. I didn't right. think that he and Fisher were close, but all right, that's fair enough. Dave freaking Baker. <laughs> no, come on. Come on. He's still friends with Dave Baker. The home fix-it guy. 
and Fisher are Facebook friends, but Fisher okay. dropped me. You sure he didn't, like, accidentally drop you? Like, maybe he No, you this was this was thing. Ashley Frasca. Oh, come on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, she's well, way nicer and cuter than me and yeah, all that yeah, stuff. Definitely. But I, I certainly, I mean. Maybe he's got criteria that you're not. Like, I've had dinner with this guy a dozen times. We've we've done things together. We've gone out to bars together. Sure. I'm pretty sure he's never broken bread with Ashley Frasca or Dave so. Baker. Jim, Jim Copeland, retired voice guy from our station. <laughs> <laughs> he's still friends with him. Dude's been out of the building for four years. Fisher's still friends with him on Facebook. Um, let's see. Uh, Chris Nicewanger. Used to be the video guy here. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. Been, he's been out of the building for. I guess maybe they both work years. at corporate now. I don't yeah, know. Maybe. Uh, maybe um, just keeping his corporate friends. Maybe that's a. I don't know. Well, all the I mean, Dave Baker. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, there's one other that I wanted to bring up. Uh, Drew Anderson, our new uh, assistant program director. Weird. Weird. And, I mean, Fisher will text me during the show often. Text him right now. I th- I'm pretty sure I invited him to my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was at my wedding. <laughs> Tell him he needs to call in. Now, did you invite him to the uh, the the bridal party or whatever? The engagement party? <laughs> the engagement no. Party. no. Okay, okay. Uh, Smile Maybe Mark, that's what it was. Pull up Smile and Mark McKay. It's a little early for traffic. We're not doing traffic here. Smile and Mark McKay is a big Facebook guy. Smile and you're not. Were you ever friends with Fisher? Yeah, we're best buds. But you're, <laughs> but you're not. You're not Facebook friends with him right now. We're connected on other social sites. He uh, he's he and I are on Twitter. Yeah. Well, I'm, I mean, he still follows me on Twitter and Instagram. But he, he like f- Facebook is for friends, right? Like I, yes. I only will accept friends. Like I understand listeners want to be friends with me on Facebook, but that's like yeah. my private little nook. Yeah, and this yeah, isn't yeah. your public page. This no, is this your... is my. He defriended yeah. me, and apparently defriended you, smiling. Are you okay with that? I'm really good with that. But you know what? I nudge at five thousand friends on Facebook. Then you really have to pick and choose. I love sending out birthday greetings every day. But some people, if I don't know where they get double pages, they don't get a birthday greeting. They get uh, they get deleted. I check to see if wow, it's someone's what birthday. A birthday present for you. Happy birthday. Like, someone, <laughs> like someone's birthday, like today, mm-hmm. I will check to see if they wish me a happy birthday before I wish really? them a happy birthday. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of... I just feel like... Uh, kind you of know, douchey. Cause, no, because there's been times where, like, there was a friend from high school, and I, I wished him or her a happy birthday, like, eight years in a row, and they never, like, even wrote anything on my page. I was like, all right, you're done with the birthday wishes. But, I mean, Fishbone, come on, dude. What the hell? I think you need an explanation. I do. Yeah, maybe so, you should call in. My my <laughs> next move is either just let it roll off my back and forget about it, or unfollow him on Instagram and and Twitter. I think you should unfollow him on. Yeah. yeah. Do I be do I be catty like that? Yeah. I think you need an explanation. I think you need to get an explanation. You want to call him during the break? Sure. All right. I got his number. Yeah. Um. All right, Fishbone, if you're listening, you're about to. Uh, we're going to call him toward the end of the break, so sure. we can just throw him right on the air. Yeah. yeah I'm sorry. All right. No if, warning. If, if you're friends with Fisher and you're listening to this, don't text him and give him a heads up. Call, <laughs> by the way, but I mean, I, I don't. There's a million people I wouldn't mind that drop me as a friend, but Fishbone, like I'm his buddy. We're buddies. I don't get it. Anyway, Bannon. Oh, you got this song in quick, Longoria. Good job, Simon says. Four zero four eight seven two zero seven fifty one eight hundred WSB Talk. Have you ever uh, been defriended by someone surprising on Facebook? And, and what's the protocol here? Do I retaliate on Instagram and Twitter? 404-872-0750. This is the Mark Aram Show. 404-872-0750. wsb Talk. Fisher defriended both Smile and Mark McKay and myself. And I just got a text from a former coworker. She said that he defriended her as well. We're trying to get to the bottom of this. Uh, were you guys ever friends with Fisher on... Uh... I wasn't, no. All right. No, call, uh-huh. call him now, Chuck. All I'm right, going to talk right. to Ken in Woodstock. Ken, welcome to the Mark Aram Show. How are you, my friend? I'm great, Mark. Uh, good evening to you and all the, all the gang, all the bananas there. Uh, hey, maybe you can help me and uh, maybe a lot of your other listeners, too. If you get uh, defriended or unfriended on Facebook, do you get a notice? No, you, I had no idea. So the, he could have uh, defriended me uh, months ago. I have no idea. Uh, in, in how, do you know, how, how do you know you weren't, weren't his friend then anymore? So I went to his page, and it said, add a, add a friend. You know, like, oh, okay. so I wasn't his friend. Uh, okay. What's weird, here's another one. This is weird. Tony Schiavone blocked me on Facebook. Not only did he defriend me, he blocked me, <laughs> but he'll still call me. But Tony's a weird cat, so I, I know. Sent me to voicemail. Okay. Oh, sent you to well, voicemail. Thank, well, thank you because I've I've, I've unfriended uh, 
people before usually because of ex in law dynamics, yeah, and stuff like that. Been there. I didn't know if they realized I did it or not. Yeah, they don't I mean, get they don't get a notification. So when I first started Facebook, I mean, I didn't know anything about it. You know, I was young and, and dumb, and I accepted anyone's friend quest request. And then I realized, like, I, I can't I can't be friends on Facebook with people I don't know. So I started dropping people, and I'll pare the list down once in a while. Like, if I, I'm like, why am I friends with this person? Usually, I'll check the birthdays in the morning and be like. Why am I friends with this? Who is this? Per- and I'll defriend him, but they don't get notified, so um, there's there's no way they can know. Oh, Fishbone texting me now, maybe. No, did he? No, I don't know. I just heard my phone my phone buzzing. <laughs> um, yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Deb Green is not friends. Are you friends with Deb Green on Facebook? I am not. No. But, yeah. I, I figured she wouldn't be. I figured she wouldn't accept it anyway. So I didn't yeah, bother. She's that. walled us off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There. I think this is enough for her to deal with. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. What's I didn't the... even know she had a Facebook account. Well, she yeah. I, I don't think it's under her real name though. Oh, okay. No. Uh, maybe that's Fishbone calling. Do you do you want uh, get satisfaction on like Facebook will will recommend friends? Uh huh. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like it can either um, add or delete. Right. And I have I get great satisfaction just deleting that per- like <laughs> don't send me that person ever again. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't want to see that person's face again. Yeah. That's, I get great satisfaction when they nope. 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 Not people that send me requests, but it's suggestions right, right, like right. you have 47 right. mutual friends with this person. Yeah, usually if someone sends me a request I and I don't want to be friends, I'll just yeah. let it sit there because I don't want to say that. I got it to sit them. there in perpetuity. I've yeah. got 2000 yeah. sitting oh, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm, and I I'm sorry. I'm very active social media wise, folks. Um, on on my work Facebook page and Twitter and Instagram, I'll interact there. But if unless I've if I've never met you, I'm not going to accept your Facebook friend request. Four zero four eight seven two zero seven fifty. Joey's in Smyrna. Joey, welcome to the program. Hey, Mark, how's it going? What's up, Joey? Hey, just on the way home from work. Um, there actually is a third party app you can download called Who Unfriended Me. And connect it to your Facebook, and it will tell you. You don't get notifications, but if you check it periodically, it will tell you who's deleted you, who's blocked you, who's closed their account. Is it a trustworthy third-party app, though? I don't know. I don't really trust those third-party apps a lot of times. I used to have it. The problem is um, there's so many ads on it. Oh, yeah. Um, it's not really user-friendly, but it, there is a way to figure that out. I don't I mean, I really don't care. Uh, in in the grand scape of things, ignorance is bliss. I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. And it, like, if 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 we, I didn't have dinner with Tad on Saturday, I would have been uh, very blissfully unaware that Fisher had uh, defriended me. <laughs> and again, I'm not losing sleep over it. I'm just right. curious what right. was the cause. Yeah, I mean, did I make fun of his Mets on Facebook? <laughs> is that possible? <laughs> that, that, that maybe that's possible. That, speaking of social media, I was in bed last night and I get an email and it says like. Bill Jenkins connected to your MySpace page. I was like, what? MySpace, really? Apparently, I still have a MySpace page. Yeah, I cool. think, I, everybody I does, know. I think. Well, not yes, everybody. I don't think but... I ever deleted it. Yeah, I I gotta, so I want to go delete it. I'll try it during the break, but I wouldn't remember my password or anything like that. It was like, Bill Jenkins connected to you on MySpace. What? What the, what's going on here? How uh, bored is MySpace. Bill Jenkins? That he is he's trying to connect with me on MySpace. <laughs> uh, more of uh, Fisher. My, my dear friend, unfriending me, and little Sanjay with Would You Rather coming up. 404-872-0750, 1-800-WSB-TALK on Twitter and Instagram, at Mark Aram. This is The Mark Aram Show. The Mark Aram Show is performed before a live studio audience. No, I want this town to be near. to the show and a good uh, Tuesday Eve to you. Mark Aram here. You there at 707, seven minutes after seven o'clock. This is the Mark Aram Show heard Monday through Friday, 6 to 8 p.m. on 95.5 WSB, Atlanta's News and Talk. Three-fourths of my family's here tonight. Longoria, whose daughter's listening to the show now on the other side of the takeout <laughs> window, the stoic Eskimo. Low T screens your calls. Low T. Deborah Green, uh, executive producer of the Mark Aram Show, still on vacation, so forgive the uh, lack of quality of uh, show preparation uh, this last week, but what are you going to do? Yeah, she has to take off. We're missing our front front right tire. Yes. What happens if you lose your front right tire, Longoria? I don't know. You get a spare. You do get a spare. 
And we we, we got a little donut or a donut. We got a donut on our uh, on our front right tie right now. Um, what are we gonna do? Are right, we gonna talk a little Sanjay in just a minute with Would You Rather? Talking about Fisher. Try calling Fisher again, Low T, the guy who unfriended me on Facebook. <laughs> So your I just friend. got my friend Sarah on Facebook just wrote on my page, just checking to see if we're still friends. <laughs> yes, Sarah, we're still friends. Scott's in Marietta. Scott, welcome to the Mark Aram Show. How are you, sir? I'm great. How are you this evening? Excellent. What's cooking, buddy? Well, you know, you mentioned about Facebook. You know, you check it in the morning, check birthdays and, then you know, folks. But, you know, the, the, I've got a little quadra here. You know, you get to the age that some of your friends start uh, passing pass away. away. Yeah. I've, yeah. Had, I've had a yeah. number of friends and, and pass that, away. So, and, and what's even more embarrassing is if you send them a birthday greeting and then realize that, oh. It's so funny. So we, we had a coworker that passed away uh, about four years ago, and it was a birthday that c- it came up last week. So I went to his Facebook page just to reminisce a little bit. And there are obviously people that don't know he's not with us anymore. And they're like, uh, happy birthday, Larry. Hope to see you soon. And it's <laughs> like, oh, like, oh, come on, man. La- well, Larry's yeah, gone. It's, it, it, it's awkward. And then it yeah. gets to the point, you, you know, you somebody you hadn't heard from for a while, you go check their page and see if they're still kicking. Yeah, that's that's where we're getting to that point in life where we got to, you know, I, listen, Facebook has its uh, negatives. There's certainly a lot of them. But I, I've, I've enjoyed my time on Facebook. Keeping, I'm friends with people in high school that I never would have gotten in touch with ever again. That's true. Yeah, so there is some, some good to that. Do you know what's really good? Mm. Would you rather with little Sanjay? It is. It's time. It's now time. Or would you rather with little Sanjay? He is the guru, the soothsayer, the truth seeker, the asker of unanswerable questions. He joins us every Tuesday and Thursday on the Mark Aram Show. He's Big Sanjay. And would you rather? How are you, man? My man, I'm doing well. I just got back from soccer practice, and I am beat. How many goals did you score? So Sanjay's playing in the 12 and under league. (laughs) (laughs) You said no more little Sanjay. 12 feet and under? 12 12 inches under? I'm just kidding. How did uh, did Kai do in soccer practice? Everything good? He he did great. He got moved up to the one and two teams this week. So he's uh, progressing well. Do do, do you ever take him to swim class? Does he know how to swim? Yeah, yeah, he does swim lessons uh, during the summer, but well rounded really chilly boy. right now. Well-rounded boy. Yeah. He's, he's going to make Longoria's daughter a very good husband someday. He is. Absolutely. They would, they would make gorgeous kids, actually. They would. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be good. All right, we'll, we'll discuss that. Could do arranged out. marriage? Is there still yeah. arranged marriages? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got, Sanjay's, that Sanjay's yeah, the yeah. survivor of an arranged marriage. All right, I'm giving her away already. <laughs> All right, so uh, Sanjay's going to ask us unanswerable questions. We're going to answer them in studio. You play along in your car. Filling in for Deb Green from the digital desk, our good friend Randy. How are you, Randy Pants? Feeling good, feeling great. All right, so here we go. First question, Sanjay. Fire away, buddy. Uh, all right, number one, would you rather be insanely wealthy for the rest of your life or mad be in love with someone for the rest of your life? Those two are mutually exclusive. It's seven eleven. Is Maya listening right now? <laughs> Um, Careful. <laughs> yeah. I would just assume she is. <laughs> nah, you're fine. <laughs> well, say the question again. Let me, let me get the Would details. you rather be insanely wealthy for the rest of your life? Give me a number. Or, Throw a number on that. Insanely wealthy. I mean, you're like 100 millionaire. Oh, give me or, love. Give me love. You're a billionaire. <laughs> well, that's when, billionaire. We start, that's when we start changing the question. <laughs> that's when we start changing the equation. 100 million, yeah. Give me, give me forever love of my life. Randy Pants. Well, you know, uh, they say money buys a lot of things, so yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with that cash. You're going to go with the 100 mil? Yeah. Chuck? Yeah, I love you, hot neighbor, but I'm taking the money. <laughs> you got how many acres you can buy in Montana yeah, with 100 I'll be grand? Fine. 100 million. Yeah, I'm Sorry. with Chuck. I mean, no, you go with the money? I'm going with the money. Yeah. All right, no, Maya, if you're listening, uh, true love. True love from Saul. <laughs> uh, next question, Sajay. All right, pumpkin bread or banana bread? Oh, man. I love them both. I'm not going to lie. I grew up with banana bread, though. My mom would make banana bread on the weekends. And I, this might sound weird to you, Longoria, coming from sure south will. of the border. Mm-hmm. So we, we would, for breakfast, she would toast up she would toast up banana bread. Okay. Like she would make a banana bread the night before. All right. And then toast it and then slide a, a thin layer of cream cheese on top of it. Yeah, that does sound weird. But it was so good. Banana bread with cream cheese. To, oh, yeah. So I'm going banana bread. Randy? Um, let me fix my face. <clears throat> what? Um, I don't like pumpkins. Gross alert. So, yeah. banana bread. Banana bread? Not with cream cheese, though. No cream cheese. No. Chuck, did you have either of those growing up? Yeah, <laughs> I make both of them. Oh, look at you, Chuck. Oh. I'd take pumpkin bread. Pumpkin bread, really? Mm-hmm. Not a fan of bananas, or you just yeah. like the one pumpkin bread better? I love That's pumpkin a- bread, but I have, yeah. I have more memories with the banana bread. Waking yeah. up and waking up in, uh, 
smelling the banana bread cooking in my house and running to the kitchen. And my mom's like, banana bread just seems like one of those old things that like you have sure. bananas. Like, exactly. I don't know what to do. Let's make bread out of it. Exactly. Mm. But I would run into the kitchen all excited, and mom would be like, ah, you're not 16. You can't eat banana bread until you're 16 years old. Uh, next or question, lobster. Sanjay, or lobster. Lobster bread. Or oh, next question. All right. Let's pretend you're a retired professional athlete. Would you rather have $20 million in the bank with no championship ring okay. or $1 million, excuse me, or $3 million in the bank and a championship ring? Just one ring? Just one ring. $20 million, no rings. Twenty. I, I would never wear one of those gaudy championship rings anyway. Yeah, so. you would. No, never. You don't think so? No, I. Yeah, no. I don't think it's about. I don't think it's about wearing. I know, the ring. Sanjay. The metaphor. I know. Of when, so let's 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 be real here. Yeah, no. I, I mean, it would be cool to be a championship <laughs> ring, but if you look at me, whatever championship team I'm on, I didn't contribute a lot to it. You know, I was the last man on the bench. I'm the twelfth man in the NBA, so I didn't do a lot to get that championship ring. So give me the twenty million and no ring. Randy Pants? Uh, likewise, twenty million and no ring. Yeah, Chuck. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm with you. The twelfth man didn't do much for the ring. I'd, I'd rather take the twenty mil than now, the ring. Now, before a Longoria answers, this mm. is a San Antonio Spurs championship mm. ring. What are you gonna yeah, do? Yeah, I'm gonna take the championship ring. Yeah, take three mil. Yeah. yeah, your wife is just screaming at the radio. Take the money, Longoria. <laughs> <laughs> took the money before. I now you're not taking a hundred mil. Yeah, it's so. true love for, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. for a ring. What, what, you know. Is your wife calling you Longoria yet? By the way, no, she's not. Damn it! All right, next question, Sanjay. All right, would you rather play the main role in a small film or play a small role in a huge film? Whew. Now, that's an interesting question, Sanjay. By the way, I got asked to be in a movie. Really? Yeah, to do a line. It's a horror movie. Did you say mm. yes? Yeah, I did say yes. Nice. Um, and I'm, I'm playing a traffic reporter, so it's a big stretch. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. It's You're a like big the stretch. Dan Patrick of traffic reporters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Same thing all the time. Exactly. I'm playing Mark Aram in this movie. But I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah that's a, cool. Yeah, an independent film. Yeah. One line. Um, it's all right. Yeah, it is all right. Um, but I'm, that's not a big role in a small film. It's a small fil small role in a small oh. film. I think I want the main role in a small movie. Like, I think you get a better chance of getting recognized and career advancement if they're like, oh, he can handle the leading role as opposed to, like, cop number three in Terminator 6. You know, like, oh, hey, there I am for two seconds. on the right, yeah. So I'm going big role, small film. I'm going to go with a small role in a big film because yeah. even though you're not going to have the star of the show, but you get paid more. In a bigger film, if you have a small role, then you, you have think? a big... Yeah, I do. From working for actresses, yeah, you do. I don't think so. I disagree. <laughs> and I will call my agent and prove it. So if you're, if you're like, random policeman in Terminator 5, you're going to get paid more than... An independent film? More than likely, yes. No. Yes. Uh, I'm going to fact check you on that, Please, Randy. thank you. It might be close, but I don't think there's... It's... All right. Well, it depends what independent film. It depends how small. We didn't really get into that, right? Well, for, so for example, I'm doing one line in this independent film, mm -hmm. and I'm getting forty six thousand dollars. Oh, that's a lot for an independent film. That's a lot. Yeah, I'm also lying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Good <laughs> time. Oh my God. <laughs> what, what are you doing, Chuck? I can't act. I'm taking the small role in a big film. Yeah, just, just stand there and look, yeah, look good. Nah, yeah, no, I, I know my wheelhouse, and All acting's right. not it. Shlongoria. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take uh, the big role in a small film. Yeah. I think, like you said, you'll get noticed, and then that'll bring more. You, you get a like chance, chance. Right. like, to do, more like, to do. no one, no one's going to be, like, watching a big blockbuster film and see a guy that has one line, and be like, oh, that's a future, yeah. you know, star. Right. But if you have the main role in a small mm -hmm. film, and who knows, it could. We talked about independent films yesterday. Yep. Like if you were, um, like Steve Buscemi in um, Reservoir Dogs, like that was a, a, a bigger role in a small film, and look what's happened to him. Yep. Handsome so. and a sex, successful <laughs> there career. You go. Oh yeah. Uh, you got another question, Sanjay? Uh, sure. Would you rather date someone who is extremely short-tempered, or date someone that's extremely passive-aggressive? Oh. Hmm. I'm gonna go passive aggressive. I don't. I, I'm. I'm a laid back dude. I can't have short tempered people around me. So that. Yeah. I'm gonna go. Uh, I mean, it's not cool to be dating someone that's passive aggressive, but <laughs> yeah, okay. I think that'd be better than short tempered. Um. Well, I've dated both, Big and husky. um, 
You know, that yeah. passive aggressive, that is probably the trait I dislike the most out of anything in a person. Yeah. So I can do it with a short temper because, you know, you know I kind of got one a little bit too. So we can we can rock out. You fiery. A little fiery. So Big Husky had uh, All was, right, moving on. Chuck. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> moving um, on. Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I'm with Randy. I can't deal with passive aggressive. It, really? Yeah, no, that'll set me off worse than somebody that just yes. is kind of. So you have dealt with passive aggressive. Oh, that makes me want to. Rage. But I've never yes, dealt Chuck. with uh, short temper. I don't want you, short temper is like. Yeah, but that. Did you finish all the milk? Like I don't want that. I don't want. Yeah, it's, it's, it's more <laughs> manageable. Where's the remote? <laughs> it's usually over quick, or it's more manageable than somebody that's passive aggressive. It can really start to dig at you. After yes. A while. Why didn't you take out the trash? Like I don't. I don't want short temper. Short temper, like it's usually. I'd rather someone really be like, "Oh, uh, I see you didn't take out the trash again today." Like that. Like <laughs> oh, I'd rather deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that kills me. I would yeah. rather deal with that than someone screaming at me. Yeah, I'm with Randy. All right, uh, Schlongoria. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't like passive aggressiveness. Really? I'll deal with oh, that's the temper. Worst. I'll deal with someone getting mad at me every once in a while. What do you? Th- I never asked Sanjay. Like, what do you think on that one, Sanjay? I'm curious what oh, you I'm think. I'm all about the short temper. Really? I, I've got, the, de- the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. Come on now. Good. <laughs> is that is that a, a swipe at your current girlfriend? Are you saying that she's the devel you I, know? I, I love my girlfriend. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Good Fair answer. Enough. Is that the last one? Or you got another one, Silky? That's it. That's it. That's I got it. one from Brittany Tannenbaum uh, from Access Atlanta. Yeah. Um, Sanjay, this is for you. I'm asking you. You ready? I'm ready. She sent this uh, to me via text. Said, ask Sanjay, would you rather take a shot of water from a work bathroom toilet <gasps> or a shot of your friend's baby's spit up? Uh, Good Lord. Oh, so number like, one. Number you, one. The toilet I can't, water? I can't. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm water, going toilet I water. Do yeah. Without a doubt. No, Gloria? Spit up. Yeah, you're oh, doing spit, spit up? Spit up, yeah. yeah. Chuck's baby spit up? Yeah. yeah. No. Rainy pants? A little spit sweet up. baby spit up. No. Spit up. Hell yeah, Chuck it out. I'll meet you in the handicap spot. Yeah, no. We're going with you. Sanjay is the official accountant of the Mark Aram Show. You can find him on Brass Tax Accounting. Appreciate you, buddy. You bet. All right, coming back, 404-872-0750. Russ in Gainesville joins us next. Mark Aram on 95.5 WSB, Atlanta's News and Talk. 404-872-0750, 1-800-WSB-STALK. Uh, still to come on the show, breaking food news and spooky ghosts. Not a spooky ghost. He's a fine gentleman. He is Russ in Gainesville. Russ, uh, come here a minute. I want to talk to you. What's going on, Brother Man? Hey, buddy. I'm, uh, I'm downtown Gainesville walking because my car is still in the shop. The Cadillac is still in the shop. Yep. So the water pump went out. They should have it done tomorrow. Well, that's not a big deal. Chuck could have fixed that. Yeah, he's at $400. Oh, really? Yeah. I got a guy could have gotten it to you for three ninety. Russ, the next time you text me, could have saved you ten next bucks time. on that. So you're uh, you're you're without transport, so you're just walking around downtown Gainesville, uh, yeah, snipe hunting, taxi home. looking for love in all the wrong places. What what do you got on plan for tonight? Nothing. No. I had a fantastic night last night. I had a great surprise. Okay. Because I was, you know, I was all depressed and sitting there alone and everything. And uh, bam, 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 like 10 o'clock, somebody knocks on the door. And I don't even like to answer the door because it's never anything good. Yeah, me too. And I open the door, and Michelle is standing there. It's like a present. Who's Michelle? I haven't seen her in a long time. Oh, she's fantastic. I'll, I'll send you a picture of her. She's beautiful. All right. Have we heard about her before, or is this? Uh, probably not. I've only been with her a few times, but she lives about three or four apartments down the road. Oh, perfect. So she just came over for some reason, and. The, dr- the yeah. drop in. You gotta love the drop in, Russ. 10 p.m. It drop in. Great. Yeah, that's you can't beat that. All right. Well, hopefully things will go uh, well with Michelle. Again, send me a work appropriate picture to my email. I will. <laughs> Nothing that I I'm going to get in trouble with. And uh, we'll talk okay. to you tomorrow, buddy. Okay. Thanks a lot, Mark. All right, there you go. Russ needs a new water heater, Longoria. No water. Water pump. pump. Water pump. Yeah. Uh, breaking food news. I'm very excited about this. Okay. You're going to be excited about this too because you with tots. It does not have to do with tots. But if this comes to fruition, I'm going to eat well, which in turn means you're going to eat well. Okay. So you're going to like this, plus ghosts. 404-872-0750, 1-800-WSB-TALK. On Twitter and Instagram, at Mark Aram. This is The Mark Aram Show. Hey, this is Louie Anderson, and you're...
You're listening to the Mark Aram Show. He packed in the animals two by two. Out the camel and a kangaroo. Packed him in that ox so tight. I couldn't get no sleep that night. Roll the sun, chip and hell. Tell them about the master play. Oh, my love. 735, 25 in front of 8 o'clock. Deb Green on vacation. Jennifer Griffey's on vacation. Everybody's at Doug Turnbull's on vacation. Actually, Doug Turnbull's such a nice guy. You know what he did for his vacation? He went on a mission trip again. Mission trip. Good job, Doug Turnbull. Really? To Costa Rica. I mean, it was well, a nice, I mean, yeah. it's a nice mission trip. I'll take trip, a mission trip over there, too. The right yeah. Spot. yeah, that's very cool. Um, I got some breaking news, Longoria. Shalongoria, if you will. Where? Is uh, what's the best barbecue joint in uh, Atlanta, Chuck? In your opinion, in your humble opinion? Ooh, I mean, there's a lot of good ones for sure. Yeah, I guess I'd probably lean towards Fox Brothers. Fox Brothers, Longo. Yeah, Fox yeah. Brothers. This is breaking news. Fox Brothers news. Fox okay. Brothers set to open a second location. It's about time. In the mixed use development, 1295 Chattahoochee Avenue, in the summer of 2020. Which is within walking distance of my house. And certainly driving distance. I'm oh, not going nice. to walk there. But how many times, starting in the summer of 2020, am I going to stop there before the show? Every night. And bring us barbecue. That'd I'm going to be, be five yeah. bills before the end of 2020. That is huge, huge news. That's great. I'm excited. That's way easier to get to that location. Exactly. Exactly. And plus, the down to their other like, you, get, you get there past, like, 11 a.m.? Oh, yeah. Oh, you can't yeah. find parking. It's, mm. No. Oh, it's gonna, a tough location to, to go. I am going to be a huge fat man coming nice. in the summer of 2020. I'll join you. Uh, the new location at The Works, um, let's see, uh, we'll have 325 seats, including two covered patios, um, smokehouse, and a gaming area. What the hell is a gaming area? Oh, they'll probably have, like... Darts and stuff. Bocce ball and darts. Bocce ball, and yeah. Like that. Um, I'm very excited. Fox Brothers. I mean, there's a lot of great barbecue joints in Atlanta, but Fox Brothers is yeah. one of the best. If not I'm the glad best. they're opening a second one. They yeah. Too. Now you oh need to open God. a third one in Cobb County. You and I just realized the property value in my house just skyrocketed. It did. Yes. I legitimately think that will help the property value of my house. Is the fact that if you ever sell, you could put that as one of the top, yeah. you know, things on there. Opendoor.com. I'm going to get a new Fox. offer at Opendoor.com and find out <laughs> what that's done. So I'm very excited. Uh, your thoughts on, on Fox Brothers opening a second location? 404-872-0751-800. WSB Talk. Got to follow them on Instagram too. They always post the food pics. Oh my God, so so good. Uh, Rosie joins us in Smyrna. Rosie, welcome to the Mark Aram Show. Hey, Mark. Hey, um, Rosie. Great talking to you and listening to you all, guys. I um, have a comment on Russ, and I actually have a suggestion. Okay. I, I really think you need to get him a woman. <laughs> I, need, I think you need to just put a, a, a search out there for all the ladies, especially sugar mamas, that can pay for his car service. But the guy needs a woman, a full-time woman, so he stops calling you every time. So Michelle showed up, but... Wouldn't that be something if you could just locate some lady with a lot of money a that could just take care of that poor guy? So we a need to mama. find a sugar mama for Russ. That's that's a tall yeah. tale. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you, Rosie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the thing is, even if Russ got, if we, even if we hooked up a sugar mama for Russ, he would mess it up. I, well, not only would he mess it up, I don't think he'd want it. I think he likes, you know, playing the, the field. <laughs> yeah. The hunt. He's a, he's a hound dog. He likes he to likes hunt. He's taking care he of these is. monsters. Yeah. And he also plays the father figure to a lot of them. Yeah. Like, yeah. How many creepy. times yeah, he, he, does. he bought them whatever they want at the dollar store or Little Caesars. Yeah, yeah. Some ice cream. Yeah. I will see. Listen, we w- and Russ sent me the picture of uh, Michelle. Very nice. Uh, oh, Michelle. Attractive Good looking. lady. She is. Yeah. Uh, she is. Yes, she is attractive. I think we all She's agree. She's a woman. Right? We, we, expected, uh, <laughs> we expected something different, so we were pleasantly surprised. You never know. A girl that walks uh, knocks on Russ's door at 10 a.m. The bar's set pretty low, but uh, yeah, she yeah, was. Yeah, you got to think about that, right? Indeed. Are you? <laughs> by the way, Rosie, you're not applying to be Russ's sugar mama, are you? I, w- I was actually thinking about it. Thinking oh, about it. Wow. I, I would not right. be a sugar, but I'd be a mama. <laughs> Chuck, you're the you're filling executive producer. What do you want to do? Uh, no, uh, Rosie, hang up. <laughs> <laughs> Just hang up. Oh wow! There you go, Rosie. No I'm love, sorry. No love. There was no oh, as. Uh, I love the show. Guy. Thank you, Rosie. Awesome. As Chuck Willard would say, there was no love connection. 
Yes. We're going to put our foot down on that. We're going we're to stop. I don't want to be responsible yes, for Yes, exactly <laughs> right. Exactly right, Chuck. Uh, David's in Smyrna. David, welcome to the show. Hey. Hey, David. Um, before the break, I heard you mention ghosts. Yes. It is that season. Um, I started investigating the paranormal back in the 90s, way before all these uh, TV shows and became a fan. But currently in my condo in Smyrna, I have four spirits. Can, can you hold on one second? Out. Hold on one second. So I wanna, I wanna, I'm going to bring you right back on, Dave, but I want to play the story, which is why we're going to talk about ghosts. Longoria, I'm going to play some audio here. Uh, are you looking to make some creepy Halloween plans? WSB's Chris Camp has some suggestions. Savannah can lay claim to the most haunted city in America. Yelp analyzed its reviews and ranked cities based on the percentage with words like ghost, haunt, and creepy in them. Among Savannah's highlights, Bonaventure Cemetery featured in Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, and the Marshall House, a hotel now, but a hospital during the Civil War and through two yellow fever epidemics, and stories of guests seeing ghosts and children running down the hallway. Chris Camp, 95.5, WSB. So the question I was going to ask, do you, do you, have you ever legitimately, I and mean, don't lie to me, I can tell if you're lying. Have you ever legitimately seen a ghost, a spirit, a spook, whatever you want to call them, an apparition? Uh, have you ever been slimed like in Ghostbusters? Legitimately. If you have legitimately seen one. so funky. 404-872-0750, wsb talk All right. So now, David, in Smyrna, you, you live in Smyrna, and you live in an apartment, and there are four spirits there. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Um, well, I got a little Savannah thing, too, in a second to fit in with what okay. uh, the Please. just had. But, uh, yeah, I've got four. Two I've seen, two shadow figures. I had one peek in me at the kitchen. And then I looked over and saw one going down the hallway, and I've got recordings of the four spirits talking. Wow. Um, and what kind of, like, is this like a post apartment? What kind of place do you live in? Um, no, it's just a uh, condo off South Atlanta Road. Okay. Um, and, uh, past, past Bella's Pizzeria or before Bella's Pizzeria? Oh, way before Bella's. Okay. Uh, you know where St. Angelo's is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, near there. Okay. And how old yeah. is that? That's not that old a townhouse. Uh, eighty six, but so, it's it's not the it's not the it's the location, the it's land. the land that it's tied to. Yeah. Okay, so what? Uh, yeah. What what exactly uh, have you captured on video? Could you send me some of this? Well, I don't have anything on video. Oh, okay. But I do have a uh, CD that I can send you cuts from of one hundred and fifty sounds with fifty two discernible voices and phrases. Are these mean spirits, kind spirits? What do you uh, got? No, they're okay. They're they're a little mischievous, but no, they're okay. They, they like spilling water on the hardwood, which can be a pain. Yeah, they don't freak but, you uh, out though. You ne you never said I got to get out of here. I got to move. No, no, I've been tracking these things since '96. So Interesting. No, no, I'm more like I'm the paranormal fireman. Everybody else runs out. I'm going in. It's like what's Good going for on? You. Where's it at? All right, David. So, uh, ha hang on the line. Low is going to give you my email address, and we'll we'll talk off air. I want I want some proof. Uh, give David my email address, Chuck. Uh, Bob's up next on the Mark Aram Show. Bob, Spooky Spirits? Hey, Mark. Yeah, I um, I uh, encountered a ghost animal. Does oh. that count? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it depends what kind of animal. Pet cemetery? It was kind of. It was a, uh, I moved down here from New England. I think you and I are like the same age. I moved down here in 90. And my, uh, my parents put a pool in the backyard. Mm-hmm. And I was sleeping down in the basement, and I was awoke by a noise of an animal coming into my room. And I grew up with dogs but didn't have one at that time. And I heard something coming across the carpet, the unmistakable sound of, you know, dog claws on a Berber carpet and yeah. the jingling of the bell. And I froze with terror, and I was kind of in between sleep. I felt the animal jump up on bed next to me. Oh, my God. I turned, I turned around, and there was this white dog sitting next to me. I screamed bloody murder, and it disappeared. I freaked out. I told my parents about it. They didn't believe me. They thought I was out partying, whatever. <laughs> and <laughs> Stop taking the mushrooms, Bob. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any, any chance? Not. I mean, it's a, it's a great story. Any chance you were still kind of sleeping and, dre and dreamt this white dog? Maybe, but I mean, I went and I, I was insistent upon asking my parents to look into it, and they checked with the people we just bought the home from, and they lost a dog. Wow. And they buried it in the backyard, and right it, was a, pool it was a small dog. It was like a small white dog. Wow. And we, the pool was being dug up at that time. Never saw it again. I mean, 
One time, well, you scared him. He was trying to be your buddy, and you you, screamed screamed at him. Yeah. He doesn't know he was dead. You should have put out some uh, some Purina One in a little bowl the next day and see if it, see if the the dog food was gone. That's interesting. That guy sounded legit. Might have been still dreaming, but I mean, yeah, that's a yeah. if you're going to make up a ghost story, you can do something you know more fantastical right, than, than a, dog. a white dog, little Bijan Frise that <laughs> jumps on your bed. Peter's in Marietta. Peter talking ghosts on the Mark Aram show. Yeah, hey guys, what's up? How are you doing, sir? Good, good, good. Uh, when I was younger, um, this was probably when I was about nine or ten years old, but this was uh, in, the, in the house I grew up in. And the previous owner of the house uh, was a woman who actually died of, of breast cancer, and I'm suspecting that this is, is who I saw. Now, this is the one and only time I've ever seen a ghost in my life. Mm-hmm. I have not seen one since anything like this, but I will never forget this for the rest of my life. I was going to the bathroom one night. It was late at night, probably 2 or 3 in the morning, and I'm walking to the bathroom, and I just happened to see something in my peripheral vision down at the bottom of the stairs. And so I turned my head to look, and I looked down at the bottom of the stairs, and there was a woman in a, a white dress, and it was uh, just a white figure in a white dress. I couldn't see any facial features or anything like that, but she had her hand on the, the ball of the railing at the bottom of the stairs just staring up at me. And I froze in shock. I didn't, you know, believe my eyes for a second, and I just kind of freaked out and, and froze. But I turned my head, and I looked back, and it was gone, and, and that was it. But I, I will never forget that. Was she attractive? And like I said, I couldn't see any uh, facial features or anything like that. It was more of just an outline. But I, I have a feeling it might have been the woman that, that died in the house. Oh, wow. I don't know if it's good to see, if it, to have never seen one or just see one once. Because if you see one once, yeah, you, you doubt yourself. You're yeah, like, you're like, well, did that really happen? Yeah, did I really see? Like, that? it's either never seen it or see him all the time. Right. Like that one time thing. It's like, well, I don't know. Is it real? Was I imagining that? John's in Sandy Springs talking ghosts on the Mark Aram show. Hello, John. Hey, huge fan, and uh, I know where you come from. Uh, uh, got relatives up that way. I've got the funniest ghost story you've ever heard. 25 years ago, I was clerking for a federal appellate judge, and once a month we would go up to Richmond to the Lewis Powell Courthouse, which is this rich old building, and it's just down the hill from the State House, the capital of Virginia. And in the basement, there's a long corridor, no doors, and at the far end, a little off to the left, was a computer room. And it's 4.30 in the morning. I'm working on a memo for the judge that he needs uh, uh, by the time he takes the bench Mm -hmm. at 9 a.m., a a bench memo. Uh, I've got the room dark and the A.C. cranking because it's hot as hell, so uh, I can't really hear. And uh, the hallway's lit up, but the room I'm in is dark. And a, 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 a person drifts by silently past the door to the right. A sidler. And scares the bejesus out of me. And it felt like 10 minutes, but it was really only like 30 seconds. I finally got the courage to stand up, and I walked to the door of the computer room. I looked to the left, a short segment of the hallway, there's nothing there. I, I, I go to the right, and I turn, and I look the whole length of the hallway. No one's there. Wow. And, 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 and then I to the elevators at the other end of the building, and I go up the floor. And fortunately, there was a federal marshal guarding the courthouse, and and, uh, I said to him, sir, please, do not tell the judge that I clerk for what I'm about to tell you. He'll think I'm crazy. But, but, But someone dressed in modern clothes just drifted by the computer room downstairs. It it was like a ghost. Did he had he he seen it too, John? He started cracking up. This is this is pre nine eleven, and I'm sure they fixed this right after nine eleven. He goes, "Oh, that's just Carl. He's a homeless guy who comes in through the Civil War tunnels. The Civil War tunnels under the State House." That's a bit, John. I got to run. I'm so sorry, buddy. We'll be right back. Final segment of the Mark Aram Show next. Mark Aram on 95.5 WSB, Atlantis News and Talk. Sadly, we're not going to be able to get everyone's uh, ghost story on because we ran out of time, but we can sneak Chris in from Peachtree City. Chris, welcome to the show. Hey, how y'all doing? Excellent. What's your ghost story, Chris? Okay. Um, I was sleeping, and I woke up, and 
and my grandmother was standing at the end of my bed. And it was just the strangest thing. And she, she, had already, thing. she had already passed at this point. She oh, wasn't... she had passed probably about four or five years before that. Yeah. Was she upset and with you? What, what was the deal? I, I don't know. I never figured it out. She just kind of stood there. Um, she just had a smile on her face. And it was just the weirdest thing because she was dressed exactly like I remember her. Oh, wow. With her shirt waist dress any, and her any sweater chance, around her Any shoulders. chance you were dreaming, Chris? Was it possible you were just dreaming? No, I was wide awake. Yeah. I was wide awake because I blinked and she was gone. Yeah. And I, I got up out of the bed and I'm looking all around the house going, where did you go? <laughs> Make me some it French toast, just, Grammy. Yeah, yeah, please. Interesting. All right, Chris. Well, I mean, and that was the only time you saw her? That was the only time. Wow, and that's so creepy. I, I love you, Grandma. Don't come visit me. Yeah, yeah I don't If want, you're listening I, to the show, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Let's do Star of the Show, by the way, Longoria. Star of the uh, and now, show. now, are you guys ready for the Mark Aaron The Mark Aaron Show. Star, Star of the Show. Um, Man. I don't want to give it to Randy again. She's won like five times in a row. We'll give it to Sanjay. Sanjay did a good job, right? Yeah. Everyone agrees? Sanjay did it? Sure, sure. All right. Sanjay started the show. Uh, tomorrow on the show, Millennial Match Game, I think we're going to have some food delivered. Mm, Johnny nice. Kilbasa with a fast food review, so stick around for that tomorrow at 6 p.m. Uh, we'll continue the conversation on Twitter and Instagram, at Mark Aram, Facebook, Mark Aram WSB, unless you're Fisher. In the meantime, go to sleep, little baby. Go to sleep, you little baby. Guests of the Mark Aaron Show stay at the All Suite Omni Hotel, located in the heart of Chicago's Magnificent Mile.